this is Dennis Hagler with your uh, quick tech tip. Uh, those of you who have been looking forward to Premiere for a number of years and been marketing on your calendar, it's, it's finally here. Uh, but in, in our industry and in commercial refrigeration for years, we used refrigerants R22, 507, 404A. These were low glide refrigerants, zero glide refrigerants. So what did that mean? That meant that if you looked at a TP chart, there was a pressure and there was a temperature and that's it. For the last several years now, uh, refrigerants such as 407A have been the predominant refrigerants and they have high glides or they're referred to as high glide refrigerants. But there's a lot of folks out there in the technical field who really don't know what that means. So give you a brief description of, of what a high glide refrigerant is how it differs from a refrigerant with little or no glide, and then an example of how you would use your TP chart differently. So if you look at the, uh, the chart that's on the screen, the graph, it shows 507 and 404A, and there's one line that represents each one of those. So if I use 507, for example, and I have a temperature of 20 degrees Elf, that corresponds to a specific pressure of approximately 72 PSI. But if you look at a high glide refrigerant, there's two points, there's two lines, and then there's terms like bubble point and dew point and midpoint that's introduced into the, the conversation. And, you know, there is a lot of misunderstanding around what those mean. So I'll try to give you a, an explanation. If you look at the chart again and say you have a, a 407A refrigerant that's at 62 PSI and approximately 10 degrees in temperature and you warm that refrigerant as you start warming it as you notice you get to approximately 15 degrees and you get to what's called the bubble point line sometimes referred to as the liquid point since 407a is made up of a lot of different refrigerants that's the point in which the first refrigerant and the combination of refrigerants begins to change to a vapor it begins to bubble and as you continue to warm the refrigerant from say 15 all the way up to 25 degrees Fahrenheit, the refrigerant continually changes from a liquid to a vapor as each component of the refrigerant vaporizes. And then once you get to approximately 25 degrees Fahrenheit, it's all the way a vapor. At that point, that is referred to as the dew point. And the difference between those two temperatures, in this case around 10 degrees, is referred to as the temperature glide. So that's a brief description of what a temperature glide is or high glide refrigerant. So the next question would be, you know, what does that mean to me? So the next uh, shot on your screen is of a uh, part of a TP chart. As we said before, if this was a say a 404A, you would have a temperature and then you would have one pressure. But on a, a refrigerant with a glide, you'd have a temperature and then you have your dew point or vapor, also referred to as vapor pressure. And you also have your bubble pressure. And then you have the midpoint, which is the average of the two. Now it's important really to understand all of them, but for the purpose of uh, this discussion, we're just gonna talk about what this means as far as setting superheat at an evaporator. And I would always recommend for setting superheat at an evaporator to use the dew point. So as you would set for any refrigerant with a lower glide, you would determine, say, your evaporator temperature needs to be 20 degrees. You would look on your chart and you would set your system up for a pressure of 42 to 43 PSI. Then the next thing you do is you would adjust your expansion valve, adjust it to around 28 degrees temperature at the outlet of the evaporator that gets you an eight degree superheat and your system should work fine. If you uh, set your superheat and set the system up on bubble point, uh, you're going to have a very unhappy system and an unhappy customer. You're either going to be maintaining temperatures well above the set point or most likely depending on how you adjust your superheat you'll have a system in which you have flood back, potentially damaging your compressor. So uh, that's a quick tip on high glide refrigerants, how they differ from zero or low glide refrigerants, and what that means to you when setting superheat and evaporator.